Hello everyone, welcome back, Robert Dempster here. So now that we've created our character, we know two different methods. We can use the carve tool, or we can use the vox layer, or we can use both to create this character. Now we're going to go ahead and start painting on top of our character. Now the great thing about 3D Coat is that we've got everything within the one software. We can sculpt, we can retopologize, which again, we're going to get into in another video. Um, you can render your model, so I can go over to the render panel here and I can render this out with really nice lighting. And I can also paint directly within the software. So it, it's brilliant to pretty much do everything you want to create a model. So we're going to go over from the sculpt panel and we're going to go to the paint panel. And we can now see that we've got our layers and we've got layer zero and we can start painting directly onto this character. So I'm going to snap this to a front view and we've got some multiple tools here. We've got our brush tool. Uh, I, I mostly use the brush tool, the, uh, the eraser. We can use the paint buckets and we can also apply a photo directly on top of the object. Uh, we can add text to the object. Uh, so it's much like uh, Photoshop in that respect. So we're going to add a new material directly on top of this one. And what we're going to use are some reference images to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this on my symmetry. If you haven't got symmetry on, we can go to symmetry or you press S on the keyboard. Make sure that the X axis is selected. So we've got this yellow line that runs through the center there. And I'm going to go down on my default textures here all the way down to new. So if you select new, it's going to come up with our smart material properties and we need to create a new material. Okay, so I'm going to select this texture here. It says click to select color texture. If I click that, then I can go to my reference images and I can load my reference. So what we're going to do is we're going to select any reference that you like. Uh, I've got some ones here from DeviantArt that are free to use. And you can select a texture that you think might work. So I'm going to test this one for now. It's a Wolverine inspired picture. I'm going to hit save. Okay, and now we've got our texture um, here on the smart materials. So we're not going to see it yet. You go over to the smart material preview. You can see that that texture is trying to tile directly on top of our character, which doesn't look good at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch this over from uh, cube mapping and we're going to change it to from camera. So now we can see we've got this picture in our window here. Now here's where we can move our image. So this one here, if you hold left click and drag, then it drags our image. You can also select reset. So if this, it looks slightly skewed. We can press reset and that's going to go back to its default size. So now we need to select this magnifying glass and you don't just left click and then that's it. You're on the magnifying glass tool. You have to hold left click and stay on that icon. So when I hold left click, you can see that it stays there. So I'm just holding left click, dragging from left to right to zoom in or out. And then I can move this into play. So I'm just basically trying to line this up with our character. It's not going to be perfect. So we are going to need to move this, but we can focus on certain areas and then we can move this texture. So let's just say we focus on the torso here. Uh, okay, that's looking pretty good actually. That's lined up quite nicely with our character. And then we can start painting. Now we can remove some of the opacity here so we can see what's underneath. And here we've got it set to 30%. So we could set this to something like 10 so that we can barely see it. Or you might want to set it to five so you can barely see it at all. But the great thing about this smart material preview is if I select this little tack here, then I can see what it's going to look like when it's painted onto our model. So this is a little preview to see what it's going to look like. We can go onto our brush and then we can just start painting this on. When you press E on the keyboard, it's going to bring up our tools. So we want to select that first brush there, that first one, and then we can start painting directly on. Now at this stage, I'll usually just set uh, this to either a hard brush or a soft brush. 
it's up to you. I usually start with a soft brush and then start painting directly on top of the model because we've got that symmetry on, it's gonna flip to the other side. Okay. And then we can move this over and I might wanna just set this to 15% so we can see it. Or again, we can select this little smart material preview. We can see what that looks like. So I might just wanna concentrate on that bicep there so I can paint that on. Then I can go back to that smart material preview. I could zoom in. Try and line that up. Okay, so this one rotates, this one moves, this one zooms in, and then this stretches the image. Okay, that looks okay, so I'll then paint that on. And you can be a lot more precise. You could go and flick to another image, which I might do shortly. I can move this somewhere else. I don't really like this bit here, so I might just remove that, paint that on, and then just keep going. So I'm gonna reset this image, and then I'll concentrate on the legs. So I'll move this down. That looks about right. I'm gonna set that back to five, and then paint this on. And if you want to be really abstract, you don't need to use a human character at all. You could use something like a, an Apache helicopter and see what that looks like. Because you, you're just after the texture. Uh, some of the, those details, if you're using a character, are going to come out and you're going to see that directly on the model, which is quite cool. But you don't have to use a character at all. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so let's close that down and let's just try another image. So you can do a new one if you wanna keep the original, that's fine. Or you can right click and go to um, where are we smart material editor and then you can just change this image uh, I might just create a new one for now just so we can switch between them if we need to so what shall we use let's try something like this okay let's click Save give it a while just for it to load there we go and then back to cube mapping select from camera we can press reset and then we can line this up. So here we're gonna get a lot more kind of abstract shapes here. I really like that red on that image. If I just go back to 30%, I really like this red or even the orange here is very nice. That might just be a little detail that you wanna add. So let's try it. Let's just put that directly on top of our helmet, set that back to five and then just paint that on. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, I, I obviously I would uh, change that to some sort of metal texture. But we can see that there's no way you would think of using that texture if you were going to draw this. But just by using these images, you can come up with these really funky textures and patterns. And maybe I want to introduce some of that orange here. You know, and you can just keep going. It could be very abstract and you come up with some really cool results. Anything you don't like, you can just press undo and then redo it. Yes, yeah, so that's quite cool. Oh, I can zoom way in.
Yeah, I like that little blue bit there. That's quite nice. So yeah, just experiment with this. Any time you are kind of unsure uh, whether you want to keep something or not, you can create a new layer. So you can select a new layer and then paint on top of that one. So if you don't like that layer that you've just created, you could delete it or you could use the eraser tool and just erase what you created there. For now, I've just kept everything on one layer just to keep it nice and simple. And then you can concentrate on painting the back as well. For now, I'm just going to do the front so we can see this character. Uh, so let's do a little bit more. I'll just do a little bit on the legs again from camera. I'll move this down. Let's just experiment with this. Um, and you can see it's so easy just to paint these textures on. You could um, you could spend all day just doing hundreds of them. Loads of different designs. You could have the same character with six different textures on it, uh, or you could change your character and um, and then do some more textures on that. It's totally up to you. Okay, so that's looking pretty abstract now. Let's just close this down. And then let's get into doing some more uh, custom painting. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm just gonna call this one um, uh, Pictures. And then we're gonna go on to this one and I'll call this um, something like Scratch. And I'm gonna set my default to Metals and we're gonna select a metal texture. So I want some sort of silver to show through on the armor, but I don't wanna just paint that on manually. I wanna let the software try and figure out the, the curves. So anywhere that was kind of sharp on this armor, it's gonna paint into it, so it's gonna look like it's scratched on the edges. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Now, when you select any of these metal textures, it's gonna try and bake a curvature map. Don't worry about that. Uh, just let it do that and let it save the texture and then we can continue. This here, this warning, you can click OK. And when you use this smart material, you can see that it's gonna to wanna to try and paint over the entire thing here. So I'm gonna turn on here. We can see that, um, there's these little gray balls here. If you select that, that's gonna turn on our glossiness. This one's our opacity and this one's our depth. I wanna keep all of them on. So with it grayed out, we're not gonna get a, a metal texture with it on we're going to get that metal texture and you can see if i select my brush i've got my new layer i can just paint directly on and now we've got this metal effect so there might be you know some areas that you want to paint a little bit more custom uh, so it could be i don't know a little part of this armor here you could have these little lines you know you could do it that way or I'm going to do those scratches. Now here where it says always, that means it's always going to paint on this model directly on top. But if you select always, we can do things like more on concave or more on convex. So more on concave is going to paint in those deeper areas. And then more on convex is only going to paint on the areas that are extruding outwards. So you can see anywhere that was extruding out, it's going to affect and it's going to draw that line directly on top. Okay, so anywhere that I want any kind of scratched area, I can paint directly on top of it. You might not want to use a, uh, a soft brush. You might want to use something with a texture on it. Okay, just to kind of get those lines come through. And you could do this all over if you wanted to. Yeah. So you're going to get that really nice scratched effect. So I'm just going to go back to that soft brush. So we can see it's starting to interact with the lighting there. Very cool. And you can do this as much as you want. You could change the character, uh, sorry, you could change the texture from silver, something else, let's say gold. Um, with any of those kind of materials, it might wanna bake an occlusion map. So you can just click okay on all of that. It will bake that occlusion map and then um, we can continue painting in it. Now for the mask, I'm gonna change this from convex. I'm gonna change it back to always and create a new layer. And then I'm just gonna uh, paint onto the visor. And I'll do that once this is loaded.
I would recommend when that when these are loading, uh, try not to touch the screen because it can lag and it can crash the software. So just let it load and then we can start painting. So yeah, if you wanted to add any kind of gold, any color you want, you can paint directly on top. Very cool. So it's just a really nice little abstract way of creating these characters. Right, so let's change that from convex to always. And this time I'm gonna paint onto that helmet. And I can barely see now where I actually had that mask. So let's just guess. There we go. And just make sure that uh, you're happy with your model before you start painting, because if you go back into your model, it will remove the paint. Yeah, so ideally I would have needed to have flattened this out first, but for now, I'll just keep it the way it is. I can always clean this kind of stuff up in Photoshop. Okay, so here is our character and it didn't take too long at all. You can just keep going. You can add more details if you wanted to. Yeah. And then when you're happy with that, we can start rendering it. So now that we've textured it, I'm just going to close this down and we're going to go over to the render panel. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in and get this so it just matches the screen. And then we can render this out. So there's some options here that you can use. You can use the add lights if you wanted to add multiple lights to the scene. So let's say, for example, I wanted to add a, um, let's say a blue light. Then I could do add light. And then I could change this white to a blue. And then here I can change the settings so I could maybe change the light height. So it's much lighter, uh, sorry, much higher. Um, what I don't like about the renderer in 3D Coat is that you can't actually see where the lights are. Yeah, so you're going to have to move these sliders until you get that desired effect. Uh, so yeah, you may need to rotate the lights. And then you could maybe add another light and you could do a complementary color. Let's say you do an orange light. And then you could do the same thing. So you could change the light height and then you could change the rotation. But you don't have to do all of this, uh, but it can look quite cool when you add multiple lights. Again, when you've got that complementary color, it'll look very nice. And we can see all the, the highlights here are starting to come through, which is looking really good. So let's render this out. When you hit render, it, it will render it, but it won't save it anywhere because we haven't told it where we're going to save it. So here where it says render result, and if you haven't done all this, it'll be higher up. So render result, and there's this grayed out box. If you select that, then we can save it somewhere. So I'll save it in this uh, ref folder here. So I'll just name this uh, character01, and then we'll hit save. It's currently set to a PNG. You can save it as a JPEG if you want. I'll keep it as PNG for now. We can also set the render size, so you can increase that if you want. I'd recommend going up to, you know, 4K, 5K, and see what that looks like. Uh, 1080 is quite small. If you want to start adding some close-up details in Photoshop, you're going to want to make that a bit bigger. So let's set that. And now we can click Render. And then it will do that render. And it does it quite quickly. And then it will save it uh, in that folder. And when it's done, it will just go straight back to the software. So it may do this multiple times. The higher you set the resolution, the longer it's going to take. But again, it doesn't take too long in 3D Coat. So in the next video, we're going to put this into Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how we can start painting into this or maybe changing the design slightly and maybe even adding a background. Um, and then we'll finalize it there. So. This is a very quick way of applying textures, very quickly coming up with a silhouette for our character. You can do multiple of these and put them into Photoshop and you can put them side by side as I have done here. So this was, you know, this took about, 
I think it was about half an hour. So it doesn't take very long. And here I used that image uh, that was in our ref image, this one, predominantly this one, and then just edited it slightly in Photoshop. And then this one, uh, again, I believe it was this image this time because it had the slight camo, but you can get different results just by playing around with it, you know, just overlaying the, the textures. Uh, here it was very specific. I got the flag on the arm there. Uh, and again, you don't have to use a human character. You can use anything you want. So experiment with it. Use this very quick tool, that carve tool, to create um, to create the um, abstract shapes. And then we can continue in Photoshop. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye.